Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are continuing on with our VGC Series 10 content and featuring a team from a very good friend of mine, which is from Stu and uh, the team is all based around Palkia. So this team, before we get into the details of it, uh, Stu piloted in the GeForce Ranked Ladder Tournament and he finished number one with this team. So the team performing very well, so it's a privilege to be able to feature it on the channel for all of you today obviously there is the rental code for the team so if you do try it out for one please drop a comment below give Stu a shout out and then secondly let me know your thoughts on the team and Palkia in general as a restricted in series 10 so you can see you've got the combination of Palkia it's got trick room it has that option that it uh, not all of its other counterparts restricted ones have in this format and um, it has a base 100 speed so it has the ability to perform pretty well out of trick room and as a trick room Pokemon as well support and the rest of the team pretty nicely uh considering that tailwind's such a prevalent kind of speed control mechanic in the format uh it really counteracts that pretty nicely support and cast we've got the standard staples that you're going to see on majority of really high kind of top tier teams with incineroar and rillaboom don't need to go into too much detail there um because we know what they do providing that fake out support pivot support and all things around that uh amoongus is a really nice option for palkia obviously one of the things that does give palkia quite a lot of issues is uh, um, and Amoongus kind of comes in and is able to support pretty well there, especially with that clear smog to get rid of any uh, geomancy boosts and things like that. Also acts super well under Trick Room and has the redirection with Rage Powder to help out all of its teammates. Uh, then you've got Stack Attacker, another Trick Room Pokemon that is going to be able to do a lot of damage under Trick Room. Got the safety goggles to kind of avoid the spore rage powder attacks that you're going to see from other trick room pokemon that are going to be problems that like amoongus for one and then rounding the team off with moltres with that assault vest so giving you a little bit more bulk giving you a dark type to kind of give a little bit more stability against things like shadow rider calyrex and a flying type as well which helps out against rillaboom and other um things like urshifu and flying weak pokemon i guess so um all in all this is the team it looks really fun i'm looking forward to diving in with it today so hopefully you are as always we'll have a couple of games of the team now we'll talk about how it pilots its weaknesses its strengths and then we'll wrap up with the rental code at the end of the episode so sit back friends we'll jump straight into game one. First up today we have a team of kyoga serena rillaboom weavile tornadoes and urshifu so um this looks pretty scary it looks very familiar like i think it's maybe santi's um players cup team uh that i do believe i don't know if it's exact but it looks very familiar you've got to excuse me as well obviously like the last two weeks have been i've had quite a lot going on so um it hasn't meant that i've been able to do the content or put the put the teams out uh that i wanted to or actually play in general so i'm kind of a little bit behind but i'm sure you'll be able to help me out in the comment section down below but what are we looking at we've got fast fake out from the the weavile that we'll need to be uh very careful of you've got the the tornadoes there providing tailwind we know about they've got serena to kind of prevent any priority attacks disruption from our end um and then the urshifu to take advantage of the rain there but the one thing that you would say is palkia has a really good matchup into this team i uh, got to be a little bit careful around the Serena and Rillaboom of course uh, but Intimidate will help that out a bunch um I think we'll go heavy trick room here because what can they do to really prevent that I mean they've got Weavile that can come out turn one um probably Rillaboom Rillaboom Incineroar and what do we want for our last one maybe Amoongus but maybe Stax is not too bad but I think Amoongus is probably all right the other argument would be Moltres here could be pretty decent but uh, I think the Amoongus if we can get the trick room up is pretty nice and Amoongus gives us nice options to kind of come in and redirect and get that trick room up if we're in a little bit of a an awkward spot so uh, the thing is if we get the trick room up we're, we're sitting in a pretty decent position. Kyogre's going to have a hard time in this match against Palkia. Okay, well, we got Weavile and we got Kyogre. We need to watch out for the um, the triple axle, of course, from uh, the Weavile. And I don't suspect the Kyogre. If it is Santi's team, I believe he ran Scarf Kyogre. So he might be baiting us in. Um... Baiting us in, like, switch the Kyogre straight out now. To Serena. Um, and then go for, like... Trick 
triple axle into that slot. The only issue is switching Incineroar in here makes it a little bit difficult uh, for the rest of the game, especially if they just go fake out into Palkia and then Water Spout. But are you going to do that? I don't know. I don't see that happening. So I feel pretty confident with this. If we do get punished for it, then fair enough. But we do see the Kyogre switch out. So yeah, they are baiting us in with that Serena switch. So the Incineroar switch in here is going to be pretty nice. Get that Intimidate. And you'd imagine the Weavile will either fake out or it will go for the Triple Axle. And it's more than likely going into the Incineroar slot, which was the Rillaboom. There we go. Triple Axle. It's a nice attack, but unfortunately not going to pay off too well for my opponent here. So I think this next turn we probably want to concentrate down on two... Do we really worry about the Weavile at this point? I mean, it's minus one. I'd be more concerned about the Serena so we could Spatial Rend and probably better off going for a Darkest Lariat. The other option is uh, we Parting Shot out onto the Serena, put it down at minus two. Um, and then get like a Moongus onto the field, which could be a decent option, or we could get Rillaboom back in. Um, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. We'll do that. We'll keep Incineroar on the back. Grassy Glide, there we go. Okay, well, we take that pretty well. And we get the Serena down to minus two. Uh, like I say, I think getting Rillaboom onto the field again is a nice option because then it gives us a way to uh, deal with the Weavile a lot easier. Like we can double into it the next turn or we could just go for a U-turn out into the Serena. Spatial Rend hits. How much damage is it going to do? This is a nice chunk. It's, uh, okay, is that Citrus? Yeah. And then lash out. Oh, this is not going to be good. <laughs> but not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, right. Well, we know another special round. I'll take the Serena down. Um, it is going to get the grassy glide off, but that's kind of all right. Uh, we could just wood hammer the Weavile, to be honest. But it might be better just going for the U-turn into the Weavile anyway. Um just to get Incineroar back onto the field again. So I think that's what we'll do and just take advantage of these trick rooms. And the nice thing about having a Moongus still in the back is it, it gives us, like, as soon as that Weavile goes down, uh, our grass types are like having the best time, the best time. Um, especially because Serena's just like rendered useless now with the Intimidate. And as I say, with the Moongus, we've got that redirection support, so we can get the, we can get a second trick room up if we want. Um, so the special run now coming into the Kyogre, going to do some good damage there. It is good on the special defensive side, but whew, that does a lot of damage because it's a crit. It's got a high crit rate um, chance, but um, we do pick that up. The U-turn doing really nice damage to that Weavile. The lash out here could be a little bit awkward, especially if we bring in uh, Incineroar. But it's likely they go for Triple Axle again, I would imagine, you know? So I'm just going to bring it in. Like, the Weavile's down minus two now anyway, so it's not really going to be doing that much damage. But whether or not we see <coughs> a Lash out here, we could do. No, they're going after the Boom again. It's too big a problem. Look at that damage. It's huge. It's huge damage. <laughs> um... But now we're sitting in a nice spot because the, the Kyogre is not really an issue anymore. We've got a pretty free attack into... Um, I mean, we can just go for Flare Blitz into the Weavile and Spatial Rend into the Kyogre. <clears throat> because we know it is Scarfed. How many turns of Trick Room have we got left? That's the big thing. Um, two turns. So we're actually all right for this turn. We could probably Darkest Lariat into the Kyogre though, that might be a better option. And then go for the Spatial Rend into into the Weavile, because minus two, they may switch it out. And I think Darkest Lariat is going to be enough to get the Kyogre from this range. So, okay, going for a last ditch. Bit of damage with that feint. 
Uh, the Darkest Lariat, like I say, should be enough to get the Kyogre. We've got one more turn of Trick Room after this. Um, and then, as long as the Spatial Round hits the Weavile, touch some wood. So it does this part. Palkia is on point. Stu has trained this Palkia super well. Um, <clears throat> so we get rid of the Weavile. Got one turn, like I say, of Trick Room left. Serena to come in and... What's the last one going to be? What is it going to be? Urshifu? Or Tornadus? I'd imagine Tornadus. Which makes it a little bit more tricky. Like the Tornadus. Oh, that's Urshifu. Okay. That's kind of fine. That's like super fine. Super fine with, with something like um, Rillaboom. So what we'll do is we will go for a spatial round into the Serena. We will go for a parting shot into the Urshifu. We'll get Rillaboom back onto the field. Or we could even get a Moongus because we've got to keep in mind that the Grassy Terrain will be ending soon. We kind of, even though Serena is going to take benefit from the Grassy Terrain, we, okay. That's all right. We'll be able to remove the Serena from play now. Yeah, this will be enough to take it down. And like I say, with Amoongus in the back, it kind of seals the deal for us because that Urshifu is going to be able to do absolutely zip to the Amoongus <clears throat> and the rain stops. The grassy terrain should stop as well. After this, um, the only issue is we can't really... Uh, I mean, we just what we could do is just pull a double switch here and then that kind of seals it for us. This is just where that close combat's going to go into. Uh, unless they go for... Mm, okay, yeah, what we'll do is... The close combat's only... Well, they could go for close combat into Incineroar, but it's more likely they go for Surgeon Strikes. So, we'll just switch in. Um, yeah, we, we need to do that the other way around. We pull a double switch. We pull Rillaboom into... No, because the close combat into Palkia. That's that's right, yeah. And then we switch Incineroar into into Boom. That's right. That's the way to do it. Sorry, my head's my head's okay. Battle cancelled. Why were we, we why were we even worrying? Very good game to my opponent though. Uh, a nice team for us to kick off with. Like I say, I believe that is Santi's kind of uh, winning team. Um, but I'll have to check. Obviously, I'll come back and check comments, friends. So let me know down below if it is. And with that, we'll jump into game two of today's episode. Okay, our next team is a Kyogre, Tornadus, Amoongus, Incineroar, Dracovish, and Ludicolo. So full rain team here, pretty much excluding the Incineroar. But you need some Intimidate in Series 10, so you can't expect anything else. Got a nice <clears throat> Trick Room check in the Amoongus as well, as they will have Taunt on the Tornadus, you've got to think that as well. Um, pretty interesting team, obviously we've already played a Kyogre, but uh, mm, uh, matchup gods are being kind to us today because Palkia does like matchups against Kyogre. So, how are we going to approach this one? It is a bit tricky with the Amoongus, of course, but the Stack Attacker and Trick Room's pretty effective here, but it's going to have a hard time against a lot of these water types, uh, for sure. But with the Rage Powder there on the Amoongus, if we can get the Trick Room set up, we're in a good spot, you know? Um, like one option we could go for is like boom stacker. Um, I think like boom stacker, Amoongus, and Palkia makes a lot of sense. The other option is obviously Moltres because Moltres can help us kind of cut through a lot of the team issues, but you kind of want those water resists. Um, To kind of be able to come in on things like the Draco Vish, which is going to be <coughs> a huge threat. I'm sorry as well. I've had a, like on top of everything else going on at home uh, the last couple of weeks. I've had a uh, first call I've had in like over a year, so I'm just getting over the back end of that. So if I'm a bit croaky, that is why. <coughs> I don't mean to be, um, but yeah, this is actually going to be pretty tricky. I think you know it's just the overpowered nature of this team, and then the inclusion of Amoongus as well makes the trick room a little bit more awkward to kind of pull off. But uh, seeing a classic lead here from the good old VGC days, Ludicolo and Kyogre. Um, Now I'd imagine we'll probably see Fake Out from the Ludi into the Rillaboom and then maybe 
they won't spout. Uh, the other option is obviously they just attack into the stacker. We could just switch stacks into a Moongus though. That gives us a pretty nice option. The other thing to consider is that they may fake out um, an Ice Beam into the Rillaboom because it is a big, big threat at the minute, you know. So um, we could just pull a double switch, get Palkia in next to a Moongus. It gives us a, a, a few more options and we're not going to take as much damage uh, in the process here. Obviously still got to watch out for like Ludicolo with its like potential Grass Knot. Considering that the Grassy Terrain is set up, you know. Uh, it does make it a little bit more difficult. But I think a double switch here would probably be a bit more <coughs> optimal. Considering the Fake Out could come out and then we'll be able to have a look what this Kyogre is likely going to be doing. Going for the Fake Out into that Palkia and then just an Origin Pulse. Okay. Once I get rid of that stacker, I guess. Okay. Well, Palkia is still sitting in really good, a good position. And we're in a good place now to set the Trick Room up if we want to. And put something like the Kyogre to sleep. Um, because my opponent's in a little bit of an awkward spot here. They're not going to be able to knock out the Palkia. Uh, not even with a double up. Like, even Ice Beam, Thunder, and then Grass Knot. It's not going to be enough to get the Palkia, unfortunately, for my opponent. So we may see the Kyogre switch. Uh, and if it doesn't, obviously we get to put that asleep. But whatever comes in to kind of combat maybe the Trick Room. Other than the Amoongus. Because uh, the Amoongus could switch in for the Kyogre. So we've got to kind of contemplate that as well as an option. But they may not have brought the Amoongus. Just going for the Ice Beam into the Amoongus. <sighs> Do take it. Okay, well, they're doubling up their crit there. Not ideal. But we do get the berry. So unless... Oh, this might be double ice beam, which would not be ideal. Yeah, double ice beam. Okay, well... Yeah, the crit there didn't help us. But then again, I think if we didn't get the crit, we wouldn't have got a berry and probably would have got knocked out anyway. It does give us a kind of free trick room set up though. So we're in the... Da, we're, in, we're in the mode that we want and Palkia sitting in really really good condition here you know so uh for rillaboom to kind of come in now we can get rid of the ogre pretty easily the only thing you gotta consider like the thing that i'm worried about more than anything is um the amoongus coming onto the field it kind of makes me feel like kyogre will probably switch out to amoongus here which is why i probably i i kind of feel like i want to go for a u-turn into a loody, but it is a little bit risky. Like, is the Kyogre going to stay in and just click Origin Pulse? We're kind of playing off the fact that the Kyogre is going to going to switch out here because Stacker coming in on an Origin Pulse is like is yeah terrible for us. But we can maybe still pull it, maybe pull it back. I don't know though. Uh, the Amoongus is going to be extremely difficult to deal with if that is if it does come onto the field. Whereas, yeah, if we see the, the, the Kyogre switch out and Amoongus come onto the field now, which we are, this is kind of fine because we can get the U-turn into the Ludicolo. It's not going to do, it's not going to go for a water type attack into the Rillaboom. It's likely going to go for an Ice Beam. We get that Spatial Rend into the Amoongus, which is nice damage. And then we've got the option to go for that Rock Slide the next turn, preserve Rillaboom in the process and avoid taking an Ice Beam from the Ludicolo, which is likely to come out into this slot this next turn and the thing that we can do potentially is this next turn rock slide switch park here to rillaboom so we avoid any sort of spore threat as well and there's the ice beam from that ludi and it is into the stacks but we take that pretty well so like i say we've kind of planned out our next turn we rock slide hope they go for a spore into amoongus the rock slide should take the ludi down and then we get rillaboom back onto the field um in a decent spot and if they do go for the spore into the park here then at least Rillaboom's kind of immune to that um and the rock slide like i say should get the ludi i don't know if it's going to get the amoongus but we don't need to worry about the amoongus too much because we've got those safety goggles on the stack attacker so kind of setting this up pretty well and taking advantage of our, our trick room turns and once the Amoongus is gone, like the Trick Room is just a haven for what we've got left. You know, we just we, we've got double Trick Room uh, as an option, um, and we've got the Fake Out support still from the Rillaboom, so we're in a we're in a good spot. Okay, so my opponent wanted to take advantage of um, 
that regenerates her ability on the Amoongus, which makes sense. Uh, but switching in Tornadus now, not going to really enjoy taking a Rock Slide. So, here we go. We do connect. Ludi is going to go down. And oof, a Tornado is hanging on by the skin of its teeth. So, what are we going to see? We get the Beast Boost on that Stack Attacker. It is a defense, so not massively helpful in this match, but... Um, as long as we've got the Trick Room up, we're kind of alright. And with Grassy Glide as well as an option, um, we're alright. I'd imagine Imungus probably comes in now. Because my opponent probably want to try and put the Stacker to sleep. So, if that is the case, we can just U-turn out onto the Tornadus. And go... Uh, do we u Yeah, we U-turn out. Because then... We kind of play into the grassy terrain ending which will be in one turn so yeah we want to get the rally boom off the field and then we can just go for that rock slide again it also guarantees like if the rock slide misses the tornadoes um at least we kind of got a little bit better security against against getting rid of the tornadoes to avoid a hurricane which could be a little bit problematic uh, going into the last or the latter turns of this game so let's see what my opponent does and the moon is of course going to be moving before our Rillaboom, so Parker coming in, going to have no no danger of being um, put to sleep, at least this turn anyway. Sludge Bomb is something that we have to worry about, of course. But the Amoongus just protecting here, so we might avoid getting our Rillaboom off the field. We are going to see a Taunt, though, from the Tornadus before it goes down, which is fine. It stops us getting that Trick Room up again, I guess, you know. It's a big thing. But at the end of the day, now we're in a good spot just to rock slide and wood hammer. Get another beast boost. And that U turn is denied by the protect on the Amoongus. So rain does stop. She'll be starting up again. And I think we've got one more turn of Trick Room. One more turn. Um, and there's a grassy terrain ending. You know, you would worry as well in certain situations like Amoongus with the Grassy Terrain being up. Obviously going to have those more powerful like Energy Ball, Grass Knot attacks. But I, Amoongus very, very, very rarely carries anything like that. It's normally Sludge Bomb or Clear Smog. Occasionally, we can see foul play. How many turns of Trick Room we got left? Huh. I mean, we need to Wood Hammer, right? We need to Wood Hammer. The Kyogre is going to protect. The Kyogre is definitely going to protect. Um, but I mean, we're kind of alright here because... Yeah, we just rock slide Woodhammer. Kyogre is going to protect. 100%. But we got the Palkia to bring in. We're still alright, you know. Trick Room ending. We could have done with like two Trick Room... Like two more... Like one more Trick Room turn after this would have sealed it for us. But the, the Kyogre has kind of got a little bit of an out with the, the Trick Room ending this turn. So it can put a little bit more pressure on... I said the feel, especially without the grassy terrain in effect, you know. Uh, so that's probably something we want to, to try and consider. Yeah, there we go. I'm hoping the Amoongus spoils the stack attacker. That's what we kind of want. So we give away that we've got the uh, the safety goggles. So potentially the next time we can switch Palkia into stack attacker. <sighs> uh, that's not ideal. That's not ideal. Yeah, so if they knew that the safety goggles was on stack attacker, they're not going to spore into that slot again. So we switch Palkia into that slot, get the stacks off the field, and you turn and get stack attacker on the other side of the field. Um, so we can get Rillaboom out as well. But obviously, with the Amoongus flinch and kind of going against us a little bit there, um, makes it a little bit more tricky. So I think what we'll have to probably do is just switch Palkia in and then go for a protect on stack attacker. Ah, oh, we can't, we can't. Okay, forget about the taunt. Forget about the taunt. Um, hmm. We could just wood hammer, you know? We could just wood hammer the Kyogre because that gets rid of it and then just switch into Palkia. We will be put to sleep, but then once Kyogre's gone, we don't really need to worry uh, about the Amoongus because stack attacker kind of beats it one on one with the safety goggles, especially if it's only got an attack and option like clear smog or sludge bomb. We'll have to wait and see, but Palkia are likely to get put to sleep here. There's the origin pulse, really boom dodging it like a ninja. Ninja monkey, that's what it is. Uh, Palkia takes that 
Like it just brushes it, brushes it off. Easy. Wood hammer coming out. This should be enough, even out of grassy terrain, to get the Kyogre. And then the Amoongus is. What are you doing, Amoongus? Putting this park here to sleep. I'd imagine that's what we'll see. Ooh, Sludge Bomb and the Rillaboom. So. It does take us down. Ooh, ooh, that's powerful. Powerful. Um, but yeah, we're alright. We spatial round and rock slide. And that, that seals the deal for us, I think. So that's two nice wins with the team. Like I said, uh, going into team preview here. We we have been fortunate with our matchups today, but I mean we've had two pretty strong like archetypes, Kyogre archetypes, um, to face down against. And it's a good kind of I guess showing that Palkia is a very, like it's a strong option in this format, you know. Ky Kyogre is a really good, it's a top tier restricted. You can't deny that. Palkia is a very good matchup against it. So, you know, it's not one of those restricteds that should ever be really overlooked because it is is very strong. It's a bit like Dialga, you know. I haven't seen much of the limelight in series 10 but they're very very strong options and i think you know we've went through a bunch of different restrictors on the channel playing different teams and archetypes and stuff like that and i would still come to the conclusion that palkia and dialga are still restricted options that you should consider you know let's see how much this spatial run does a crit probably gets it might get it anyway yeah palkia is just too strong too strong yeah very good game to my opponent like i said two nice games today and a big shout out to Stu. so we'll uh head over now friends and we'll wrap up this episode with today's rental code right friends here is today's rental code like i say thank you so much to Stu for passing this over to us and if you do try the team out please let me know down in the comment section what your thoughts are on today's team a little bit of a shame that we didn't really get to feature the moltres today because i still think a really nice addition to the team but obviously with the matchups and how that kind of panned out in today's episode uh it was more optimal to kind of bring the other options even though the moltres we did say could have been quite useful in that last game i think the choices that we made overall were the, were the better ones in the end so uh like i said if you do try the team out have a lot of fun with it we'll be back very soon obviously like i mentioned throughout the episode i've had a lot going on outside of the channel the last couple of weeks so it's meant that i haven't really had time to concentrate on content too much uh which has been a little bit of a shame but look forward to lots of more content kind of coming so we'll be getting back into the swing of things getting more teams up and uh, obviously we are streaming at the minute and i do plan to do a vg stream this week so keep an eye out for that um it'll be later on in the week though when we do that but that should be a lot of fun alongside the emerald kaizo nuzlocke that we are doing on stream at the minute which is a lot of fun so come along see me fail after fail after fail we're getting better though uh, at the kaizo nuzlocke it is extremely difficult but it is a lot of fun so so if you're into that, definitely drop by the stream um, when they are going up. So friends, have a great rest of your day. As always, thank you so much for coming by the channel, checking out the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, your, uh, your presence and support is always very appreciated here on the channel. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting a bit more into Series 10. We've not got long as Series 10 left. And uh, we've still got plenty of Pokemon to kind of look and uncover as we go into the end of this format. So friends, have a great rest of your day. Take care of yourselves, more importantly, more than anything. And uh, I'll see you all for another episode very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.